You are listening to the Fringe Radio Network. FringeRadioNetwork.com Welcome to the Earth Oddity Podcast. The number one podcast in Duncan, Area 51, Oklahoma. This podcast brings real news stories. No fake news here, folks. Hosts Tiny and John deliver the news with their Alabama wit and their Southern Baptist charm that will make you laugh out loud because their comedy kung fu is strong. While reading the news, John, an accomplished Eagle Scout, has the occasional mini-stroke mid-sentence. And Tiny, the brains of the operation, pronounces Russian words with elegance and grace. This podcast is for you if you have a turtle army, a Florida man, some Cajun curl spice you sprinkle on a shark or a dolphin looking to hook up that you want to cook up, or if you've seen Bigfoot riding on the poo-poo choo-choo in town. So don't miss an episode. Tiny and John will be glad you're listening, and so will you. This is the best way to live your best life, so stay woke. Hello, everybody. We thank you so much for listening to another episode of Earth Oddity Podcast, whether you are in Oklahoma firebombing your neighbor's house or whether you are a man who's recently been apprehended for feeding your pet squirrel meth. We thank you so much for joining us. My name is Christopher Tiny Sullivan. Joining me as always is my recently no longer homeless co-host, John Long. How are you doing today? I'm fine. That's fine. Yeah, I forgot to announce. Were you th- <laughs> no, maybe I did announce, but I'm not homeless anymore, and that's nice. I'm sure my mom's glad we're not living with her. <laughs> and uh, we've moved over into Bell Mead, so I'm officially announcing that I'm rich. So um, just <laughs> so everybody knows, all you poor people out there, I live in a really nice neighborhood now. So Just don't ask to borrow any money. No, it's yeah. All going it's all to going mortgage. to mortgage. <laughs> Every bit of Every it. Every dime. <laughs> Look, if we got to like get some repairs done on my car, we're going to have to figure out like which we're going to pay this month. So. <laughs> But it's a really nice neighborhood. The few neighbors that I've met so far have been really nice, too. So I've plugged the podcast with one of them. So. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if she's listening or not, but if she is, shout out to you, Joyce. And, uh, you know, I'm there sorry goes, I hadn't cut my yard yet. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the first – I don't know if I told you this. Maybe we were talking. The first neighbor we met was like – Oh, it's like a really quiet neighborhood, and you're going to love it here as we're, like, unloading a drum set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, like, oh, yeah, no, we're really going to love it. You guys, we're going to get along great. Oh, quiet neighborhood? Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah, sorry. Here, I'm coming with four kids. I got electric guitars, you know, saxophones, euphoniums, trombones, uh, a drum set. We're getting a piano, too. So, <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm, Y'all are a uh, tambourine away from being the Partridge family. What I want. Sadidra plays the flute. I don't know okay. if anybody knows this. She's a flutist. She's a flautist or a flutist. <laughs> Whatever. And I always thought it would be really great if we could be a Jethro Tull cover band and like family cover band and we could call ourselves the Aqualongs instead of the Aqualungs. <laughs> and, uh, but she won't get on board with that. So bummer. Yeah. I know. Well, anyway, uh, man, we've got some good stories this week. Oh, I've yeah. We've got a giant. Asteroid made of gold out in space somewhere. Nice. We've got some very controversial technology on the horizon. Okay. What do you got? I got a guy who is uh, suing a fast food chain, and then I got another. Well, we've learned this week that you can't mix puffer fish and cocaine. So Okay. So if you want, I'll start out right there. Start off that way. My story will be last, and we'll... Okay, so this comes to us from Fox News, Fair and Balanced, trusted news source of every Southern Baptist in the world. And it is titled, or the headline reads, Man Learns the Hard Way Mixing Puffer Fish and Cocaine is a Horrible Idea. Now, guess where this guy's from? Uh, Let me think. Well, I'm going to say he's not from Haiti because anyone who's watched The Serpent and the Rainbow knows that puffer fish is something you should stay away from. Okay. Unless you want to be a Haitian zombie. That went all over my head, but okay. okay. He's from Florida. Okay. All right. He should know better. (laughs) A combination of cocaine and toxic puffer fish liver sent a Florida man to the emergency room, according to a new case report. The liver from the puffer fish, also known as fugu, I guess is how you pronounce it. Yes. That's considered a delicacy in Japan. Mm-hmm. 
but eating it is risky as the fish's liver contains a high concentration of deadly poison known as tetrodotoxin. Wow. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm impressed with your knowledge of puffer fish. Um, what we, in the business, we call that TTX, okay. by the way, which causes paralysis if it's ingested. Puffer fish is something that you don't want to just catch and eat. So if you're a, a sea, seafaring angler, just be aware of that. Uh, Dr. Zane Horowitz said, he said, there are chefs in Japan who go through years of training on how to properly prepare this so they don't kill their customers. Yes, got to be, nice. yeah. be bad for business if you're killing customers. <laughs> yes. TTX is 1,200 more times toxic than cyanide. Wow. Yeah, far less than a teaspoon of it can kill a person. And once it's ingested, it blocks voltage-gated sodium channels in certain nerve cells. When these nerve cells are blocked, muscles can't contract. Symptoms of TTX poisoning, in case you're ever around somebody, is tingling sensations, numbness, dizziness, nausea, and then muscle weakness, trouble breathing, and paralysis and death. Well, there's no antidote for TTX, and doctors often place patients on ventilators to help them breathe until the body excretes the poison. So here we're getting to the meat of the article. The 43-year-old man's case was more complex than a typical fugu eater's. Over the past few days, he had ingested cocaine and eaten canned foods, which made his physician wonder whether foodborne botulism was at play. Botulism is no joke either. Mm Mm-hmm. So the man had high blood pressure, probably from his cocaine use, <laughs> and chronic kidney disease, and the doc- the doctors noted. And when he came to the ER, the man was not in good shape. He was throwing up, had weakness, and difficulty speaking. This sounds like a man who's living on the edge. Yeah. So the man's grandma had also nibbled on the puffer fish. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. And she came to the hospital with him, but because her poisoning was had been smaller, uh, she had fewer symptoms. They immediately gave the man medication to lower his blood pressure and intubated him so he could breathe. And they gave him uh, botulism and a toxin as well. The man received medication that had been shown to help other people who had eaten bad fugu. However, his recovery wasn't straightforward. While in the ICU, the patient developed pneumonia and his kidney problems flared, requiring him to go on dialysis. So long story short, they do a few more things to him. And then he just couldn't recover, and he died. So, oh man! So he did. He did bite the bullet. So to speak. yes. So the man. message is clear here from the thing is don't eat puffer fish. Uh, professor Bill Atchison, who's from Michigan State, he's a professor of pharmacology, says so. Don't eat puffer fish. Cocaine's still good, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely don't it's mix in, the two. Yeah, but you don't want to mix the two, right? <laughs> right. Yes. Oh, well, you know. Uh, was it fu- Fugi? Fushi? Fugi? I don't know. How you, fugu? Fushi? Fugu. 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 It's yeah. Fugu. You know, the reason they eat Fugu is because it does have trace amounts of the tetrodotoxin inside it. Right. It, you know, gives you a tingling sensation. You get a little buzz it. or something? I don't know about a buzz, but, you know, in Haitian voodoo, they actually use this to create zombies. It's, now, it's not the walking dead like we're used to over here in the States, right. but it's... You know, someone will take on the appearance of being dead. It slows the the body's uh, vital signs down to a near Nothing. trickle. Yeah. And they'll bury people, and then the witch doctor, whoever, the voodoo master, will come dig them back up, and now you're his. You're his slave. You're, you know, hmm. enjoy clearing land for the rest of your days. Wow. So, wow. I'm impressed with your puffer fish <laughs> and Haitian voodoo knowledge. <laughs> yes. That's uh, voodoo freaks me out. You know, I would like to say I dabble, but I, I do not dabble in voodoo. <laughs> just a light hobby. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a hobbyist. Yes. Yeah, I mean, voodoo freaks me out big yeah, time. It does. You know, I don't, I don't understand it all, but it freaks me out. And like every time we go to New Orleans, and they're always mm-hmm. like, "Come do the voodoo tour." I'm like, "No, I'm good, guys. <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. I don't need to do that." So yeah. But anyways, pufferfish bad. Cocaine. Not as bad, apparently. <laughs> Cocaine and puffer fish together, that's a bad Very combination. Bad. <laughs> yeah, especially yes. if you have kidney problems, too, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Well, John, have you ever been abducted by aliens? Not that I know of. I've been probed a few times, but it wasn't <laughs> aliens. Yeah. If you were an alien, can you think of a better place to abduct people than a couple rednecks in Pascagoula, Mississippi? <laughs> No, that's the, if you want to get the true flavor of America, yes. <laughs> yes. Right. 
<laughs> and now there is a historical marker that commemorates a very, well, I would say a moderately famous alien abduction case wow. in Pascagoula. Yeah, and didn't, I think my mom put this in our Facebook group. She did, and I'm very thankful for your mom putting yeah. this up. Shout out to my mom, awesome. old Granny Long <laughs> yes. out there. Yep. says here that a historical marker has been placed near the river where two men in southern Mississippi said they were abducted by aliens back in 1973. Okay. News outlets report the city of Pascagoula dedicated the marker Saturday at Lighthouse Park. Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker said that they were on the shores of the Pascagoula River when what appeared to be aliens pulled them on board a UFO, examined them for about 30 minutes, and then they returned them to Earth. Both reported the event to the Sheriff's Department and were checked out at the hospital after it happened on October 11, 1973. The story has become known worldwide. Parker published a book about the experience in 2018, so just last year. Yeah. Unfortunately, Hickson died in 2011. Both said that many people doubted their story, although there have been a few witnesses to come forward to corroborate certain details about the story. <laughs> That's the end. I'm really not super duper familiar with this. I have, I have heard about it. Yeah. But uh, I don't. I don't really know about the details. I do know that it's not. It's not the Betty and Barney Hill type scenario. It was very, very uh, different. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. Pascagoula's down there on the coast, so I don't know if aliens frequent that area or not. If they don't, they should. Yeah, it's beautiful down there. <laughs> it is. You know, I mean, Biloxi's no mobile, but right. Pascagoula's no Gulf Shores. But I mean, it's it's not bad, and. Uh, I think that it's really the uh, what do you want to say the natives of Pascagoula <laughs> right. that are really going to give the extraterrestrials a, a right. rich <laughs> yes. tapestry of yeah. the American Southeast. <laughs> I, and I don't know how many people live in Pascagoula. Maybe maybe fifteen thousand something. Mm-hmm. Like. I mean, it's not like a itty bitty town. It's not like Fayette where we grew up. Yeah. Um, so maybe putting a historical marker about an alien abduction up is a good way to get some tourists people to come in and check it out it's not a bad way right i'm just trying to think about the practicality of it but in the process of getting like is there not like a governing body who goes through historical markers you know and approves them or something i would think so i mean you would think somebody down at the courthouse who's right yeah like busy that day because like could we put one like in the sunday school room over there and be like the first you know episode of earth oddity (laughs) podcast was recorded here could we do that and get on some kind of registry we should you know like uh the walk of fame or like the stars you know i think you got to pay to have those on there oh really if you're like the person or like whoever nominates you for one or something do you think we could start the northport walk of fame somewhere maybe so where would we put it (laughs) Well, I mean, it can't be somewhere downtown because that's way too nice. Area. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. They're not going to let us do that. We can do it like a Wood Village trailer park or something. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> and a couple picnic tables, maybe a basketball goal. Yeah. Technically, I think Wood Village is in Tuscaloosa, though. So. Oh, is it? Yeah. But it's huh. on. Is it on? Yeah, it's on this side of the river. You got Rice Mine to get to it. Okay. Deidre lived there when she was in college. I rescued her from the trailer park. <laughs> People don't know that. And now we're living in Belle Mead. So. <laughs> well done. That's right. She hitched to the right star. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's move out to a state that never gets tired of talking about itself, and that'd be Texas. All right. <laughs> the most conceited state in the union. <laughs> I, I don't know if you know this. But what was it for nine years? Texas functioned as its own independent oh, yeah. republic. Yeah, right. Yeah, they if like you know, to remind if, you. If that. you know literally one person from Texas, they'll tell they you. Told you that yeah. at some oh, point. Yeah. yeah, no, they they are they're hot, really big on themselves. You know. <laughs> yeah. Texas people are really big on themselves. They like to leave out the fact that a lot of Tennesseans are responsible for them. You know, <laughs> not being part of Mexico right now, but whatever. Right. Okay. So a Texas woman was banned from Walmart. Got to do a lot to get banned from Walmart, by the way. You want to guess why? Uh, banned from Walmart. <laughs> this could go anywhere, really. That's what I'm you know? Well, I know it's not having relations in the bathroom. They won't ban you for that. No, that's right. <laughs> yeah. No, they just ask you to leave. Clean yeah, up. Yes. Uh, she was banned after eating half of a cake and then demanded to pay half price. <laughs> <laughs> A Texas woman was banned from her local Walmart after police say she ate half a cake and refused to pay for the missing portion. 
Wichita Falls police were called to a Walmart on Greenbrier Road just after 8 p.m. Tuesday after they had received calls that a woman walked around the store eating half of a cake and refusing to pay for the whole item. Oh, man. The suspect, who has not been identified, entered the bakery section of the store and proceeded to eat half of a cake while walking through the aisles. Once at the register, the woman demanded half off because she was only buying half a cake. (laughs) So, I mean, this is really brilliant. You know, knowing Walmart, I'm surprised they didn't... Yeah. Yeah, except that. If there was a way to, like, bar scan half price, you know, they they probably would have. It's just the register girl didn't know how to do it. Uh, police say she refused to pay for the missing half of the cake despite eating it on her way to the checkout. <laughs> she ultimately paid for the whole cake once police arrived and was barred from the store for theft. A similar incident took place at another Wichita Falls Walmart earliest, earlier this year when another woman was banned after police say she rode around the parking lot in an electric cart while drinking wine from a Pringles can. Oh, wow. I don't think we talked about that, though. That was a pretty pretty big story for a while. Yeah. Wichita Why, Falls, Pringles? Walmarts, they're, <laughs> like, they're, pretty, they're giving us a run for the money. <laughs> Why the Pringles can? I'd imagine you could... I'm kind just, of go unnoticed, maybe, if you had a Pringles can full of alcohol. But, I mean, you could have a Pringles can full of Pepsi, Cola, True. and still people are going to be like, why are you drinking out of a Pringles can? Be like, hands-free, baby. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I don't have to pull these, and my hand won't fit down in there to get the chips out, so I just <laughs> toss them back into my mouth. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I don't know. But maybe her Pringles can was all she had around. She didn't want to have a bottle out. Yeah. And she's riding on a fatty cart while she's reading. <laughs> but, I mean, that's a bold move to eat half a cake and then be like, I'm only paying half price for this, y'all. Right. You know, like, that's a bold move. Does she think that they didn't see her eat that other half? I don't know. I don't know. I mean. I've seen people walking around grocery stores eating grapes. You know, mm-hmm. like they get a bag of grapes and they eat them. Right. And then, you know. And then they get up there and weigh the grapes and it's yeah. not. As right. much, because some of those are in the tummy. Yeah, right, some of those are in the tummy. I've seen that happen a lot. Now, never mind that kids have been in there sneezing on them and <laughs> you know, all that other stuff that goes on. People still do that, like it's acceptable or something. Right. It's theft, by the way. But uh, he has a bold mood to be a man. I'm only paying half price for this. You like wiping chocolate, you know, frosting. <laughs> no, I'm going to excuse Let me get that off right here. I'm only going to pay half price for this. There's only half a cake there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I just. And who would buy half a cake if you hadn't eaten the other right. half? You see well, what I'm saying? Yeah, not a half eaten cake. Now, you know, sometimes they'll sell like half a cake. They'll cook a whole cake and, and chop it in it, half. And you can and then, buy it by the slice. Right, right, yeah. So maybe that's what she should have gotten and just eaten all of that and just walked out without paying for anything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. That's a bold move by this lady. I like her moxie. You know? <laughs> yeah. I do. Oh, man, I bet she's precious. I'm sure she is precious. <laughs> I'm sure. She's probably on a fatty cart, too. <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah, hands I mean, free. She, she ate half a cake. <laughs> yes. How do you do that while pushing a buggy? I would love. I'm a, I'm a big dude, okay? I would love to eat half a cake. I've never done it. So that just I, tells you. you I don't know. know that I've ever eaten half a cake either. But I'm thinking, like. If you get a whole cake, number one, first, the whole store is going to hear you opening up that plastic <laughs> thing. Saying, in. You know, you, pop, 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 you know? Have you ever been up late at night? Yes. And like, I'm sneak a pe- Nobody sneaks no. a piece of birthday cake no. in the middle of the night because. <laughs> That's the loudest things in the world. <laughs> they could not make those more loud than they are. But then, like, are you just like fistful and cake into your mouth? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm not like a germaphobe at all. But if you're like touching the handle on the buggy in Walmart and then fistful and cake in your mouth and all that <laughs> you're probably got some sort of hand foot and mouth disease now right you know that may just be your penance for doing this but i just would i would like to know the mechanics behind it did she bring a knife like a server maybe, maybe she went she, over and got she went one. over to the cutlery <laughs> yes. and just took one off there <laughs> opened up a box of plates got her a piece of silverware <laughs> not a bad idea i might try that next time i'm over Man. at walmart well, anyway, our next story was posted up in the Facebook group by Jeremy Meandering. Maybe. Jeremy, correct us if we're getting yeah, it wrong. I'm sorry. But I'm we no th- good at but we, names. <laughs> but we thank you for throwing this up in the group because this yeah. really isn't. He's a big contributor story. in the group, too, by the he way. He really is. He's like a goal. I don't know if they give out top fan stuff, but he's one of them. Yeah. 
He uh, he put this story up. NASA headed towards giant golden asteroid that could make everyone on Earth a billionaire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> for answering my prayers. I'm going to pay off his house. <laughs> but when everyone's a billionaire, that's when trillionaires are the ones who run the world. <laughs> that's a good point. We still have to wash the dishes of I, the trillionaires, right? I'd be happy to do it as a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Even though your, uh, your house payment is now, I don't know, $105 million every month. <laughs> Maybe. Because you're a billionaire. But I would pay that house off first thing before they jack the rates up. <laughs> you know? And then I'm like, we're living here forever, y'all. I mean, well, we're just going to read the story and then yeah. we'll speculate afterwards. NASA is eyeing a nearby asteroid that contains enough gold to make everyone on Earth a billionaire. Now, get the name of this asteroid, y'all. Psyche 16 <laughs> is nestled between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter and is made of solid metal. Mm. As well as gold, the mysterious object is loaded with heaps of palladium, iron, and nickel. In total, it's estimated that Sykes various metals are worth a gargantuan 10,000 quadrillion, which to me sounds like a made-up number. True, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. wouldn't it be so many hundred quadrillion, not 10,000 quadrillion? I have no idea. I don't know how all that works. <laughs> I think you get above the like one millions, I'm very fuzzy on counting. I was Okay, hang on one second. A quadrillion is how many zeros is that? I have no idea. <laughs> You're asking the wrong dude. I've never had to add anything with quadrillions in it. Quadrillion is after trillion. Okay. And there is fifteen zeros. Okay. So, all right, Mister Google, let's see here. Even Google can't do this. <laughs> yeah, it'll give you all those like e, you know, twenty-seven times. 10 times E, you know, and all kind of weird stuff. I tried to add some really big number or multiply some really big numbers when I was figuring out our healthcare crisis, and it wouldn't give me the, the like a straight answer. I was about to say, uh, to my little calculator app comes a one E one two. Yeah, so. right. Yes. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? I'm not a mathematician. I, I don't know what 10,000 quadrillion is, but that to me does not sound like a real number. No, I, it sounds like a lot, though. <laughs> it does. Man. Anyway, that means that if we carried it back to Earth, it would destroy commodity prices and cause the world's economy worth $75.5 trillion to collapse. We've known about Psych 16 for a while, but its potential to cause havoc on Earth was recently touched upon by a veteran miner. Scott Moore, who heads up Eurosun Mining, said the sheer amount of gold in the asteroid threatens to throw the gold industry into chaos. Well, too bad for them. I was about to say, you know, <laughs> at that point, gold's not valuable anymore. Right. Right. If we get this big, giant asteroid to Earth without causing another ice age or right. destroying all life on Earth. Yes. You know, it's, I mean. Yeah, the, the he, price of gold's plummeting. I was about to say, your, your kid's pacifier's made out right. of gold. And then. And he loses it and you just pop another one in his mouth. And now that we've uh, we've took our currency off of the gold standard, we look like geniuses. <laughs> you know? Yes. So this may be how we pull out a national our national debt and deficit. <laughs> anyway, uh, the titans of gold now control hundreds of the best producing properties around the world, he told Oil Price. But the four to five million ounces of gold that they bring to the market every year pales in comparison to the conquest available in space. NASA is launching a mission to probe the asteroid in summer of 2022, dubbed the Discovery Mission, and it will arrive at Psyche 16 around 2026. Okay. But bringing back an asteroid of this value could completely wipe out our global economy. Fortunately, the space agency is taking the trip for scientific purposes and isn't planning on conducting any mining. It reckons that Psyche 16 is a survivor of violent hit-and-run collisions between planets, which were common when the solar system was forming. That means that it could tell us how Earth's core and the cores of other terrestrial planets were formed. Two space mining companies backed by big-name celebrities are gearing up for a gold rush after asteroid ownership was made legal in 2015. Okay. Wow. They made that legal? <laughs> yeah. I mi totally missed that. Well, I, I remember that there was a company called uh, Planetary Resources. Wow. There was a company formed called Planetary Resources, and they were like the first uh, space mining company to ever actually get incorporated, and they started putting together satellites that they said were going to search the solar system for possible usable metals right. and asteroids. Huh. But, uh, yeah, apparently that uh, – 
Asteroid ownership is legal now. Deep Space Industries and, oh, here's that company, Planetary Resources have each had their eyes on the 2011 UW-158 asteroid, which is twice the size of the Tower of London and is worth up to $5.7 trillion, which is a lot less than 10000 quadrillion. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's way, way less. You know, I'm not 100% sure. It does say here at the bottom of the article that this story was originally published in The Sun. Okay. And the name of the asteroid is the is Psych-16. <laughs> True. I'm not 100% certain that this is a real story. I don't know. But... But if there's one thing I know about people who own gold mines mm-hmm. is they like being rich. And if they see an opportunity to get richer, then they'll figure out how to get that gold, you know, and yeah. they'll just release it slowly over time. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how we're going to get it back. You know, I like, mean, you can't just slam it into the earth. No, no. Uh, assuming maybe you can we should tow it back. Right. Yeah. You know? Maybe we should. And it sounds like it's awfully expensive to just, you know, fly a little, Satellites up there and, you know, chip off little pieces at a time. Right. But, I mean, when you're talking 10,000 quadrillion, right. it doesn't sound like a real your, number. You cover your investment over time. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we need to figure out how to get in on this. I like to think that this asteroid is actually like in the shape of Flava Flav's teeth. <laughs> Just floating around out there, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I mean, just imagine if we could get it and it like nobody's poor anymore. We're all, we all got money. We just hand it out somehow. Well, see, now we're, now we're talking about philosophy here because is it possible for there not to be poor people, right? Well, I mean, I, mean, I know is. Jesus said the poor will always be with us, <laughs> yes. but I'm willing to give it a shot. You know? Well, I'm willing to try it, try it too, but I mean, there's always going to be somebody who is, you know, doing the jobs that nobody else wants to do, this scrubbing that's, toilets. That's where the robots the come in. Well, that's a good point. You know, because we'll all buy robots. <laughs> we got so much money. We've already got a robot that sweeps our floors. Right. So, yes. And they they got a, a Roomba that mows your grass. I know. I've thought about buying one yeah. and starting a lawn care service with it. <laughs> just like sitting in your truck while yeah. it's running. I just hang out in my air-conditioned truck and let it run. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> I know. Not a bad idea at all. But, yeah, you know, we could – I don't know. I don't, Like I say, the problem is getting it back here. Right. we got to figure out how to do that. Mm-hmm. I would like maybe pull it into closer orbit somehow. Like if we could do that, yeah. If we could, uh, they might mess the tides up and everything. <laughs> no. Well, how big is it? I don't know. I don't know. It said that this other asteroid was like the size of the Tower of London, and that doesn't seem that no. big for an. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about asteroids. It's not right. that big. Yeah, true. I mean, it's not as big as a moon. So yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Somebody get on that, Elon. Elon Musk. Hey, Elon, I know you listen. You've been a long time listener. Check that out, man. Let's see if we can make it happen. Yeah, maybe that could fund your. Uh, Research station on Mars is right. trying to yeah, and the tunnels that somehow we're still digging. I don't know. Those tunnels are going to be a thing, dude. Yeah, because I don't think we can fly. Like, I mean, Uber. I know they're experimenting with flying cars. Yeah, but I don't but, think that's going to be available to the masses. Right. I think the only way to go is down, and he's going to corner that market. The problem with flying cars isn't, and this is just my theory. Is that like if you're on the road, there's only really four directions you can go forward, backwards, left, and right. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're in the air, you can go forward, backwards, left, right, up, down, you know, diagonal, everything else. If you think about like Tuscaloosa traffic, if we just lifted it into the air, how many accidents there would be? It'd be pretty wild. Yeah. And if you, I'm for ground travel. And if you put up a intricate set of skyways, then yes. what's the big difference from those same roads being on the ground? Right. You know, yes. you're not really saving any time. And how are people going to jack up their flying cars and put big tires <laughs> in them? <Yes>. You know, <laughs> hang like a pair of uh, bull scrotum on the back of it. <laughs> they can make those longer. <laughs> True. <laughs> Such a classy thing to right. do. Well, speaking of rednecks, let's move on to our next story. It comes from USA Today. Alabama fugitive who fed meth to a pet attack squirrel, which was named D's Nuts, <laughs> arrested after a car chase. So we talked about this story last week about the right. meth. 
He had a male squirrel. <laughs> the meth addicted meth uh, right. attack squirrel. Yes. He has now been apprehended after car car chase. Which I got to think of when I was re listening to the episode last week. Like, can you just feed it? Like, you can't eat meth, can you? Like, you got to smoke it or snort no, it or ingest <laughs> or inject it. I have no experience with meth. Yeah. I don't know how you take it. I don't. Well. I don't know how you take it either. <laughs> I'm just going to say that either. I don't know if you can eat it or not. I mean, just stop right here. I guess you could. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you get the same effects or not. I don't know. I feel like this is tear your stomach up. Of course, if you do a math, you're probably not that worried about getting an ulcer. Right. So, anyways, this is from Killen, Alabama, home of Freddie Roach, former Alabama linebacker. An Alabama man who denied feeding methamphetamine to a so-called attack squirrel he considered a pet, has been arrested on new charges. The Limestone County Sheriff's Office tweeted that 35-year-old Mickey Polk was charged Thursday night following a chase in which he rammed an investigator's vehicle. Hmm. Authorities have been seeking Polk on multiple felony warrants unrelated to the squirrel he named Deez Nuts. <laughs> I don't get that joke. Which was made infamous after police said they were warned about a meth-fueled squirrel that had been trained to attack. Dang. Polk told the Associated Press last week that he was working on a plan for turning himself into authorities. The sheriff's officer said narcotics investigators caught up with him while surveilling a motel in Killian. They spotted Paul leaving on a stolen motorcycle and chased him down. Oh, got a! They tweeted out a picture of him. <laughs> Paul has been booked into the Lauderdale County Jail on charges of attempting to elude criminal mischief, receiving stolen property, and felony possession of a pistol after it was discovered he had a forty-five caliber handgun in his waistband. It's unclear whether he has a lawyer. I would say probably not. Doesn't doesn't keep one on retainer. <laughs> you think he's using a public defender? Yes. Authorities uh, authorities say uh, D's nut could D's nuts. Sorry, let me say his name correctly. Start over. D's, as far as D's nuts. <laughs> that's how the sentence reads. I was trying to avoid. As far as D's nuts are concerned. <laughs> Okay, as for D's nuts, authorities say he couldn't be tested for meth and has been released. So it's good to know that, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with these nuts you know, as, during this re- difficult recovery time and separation from his owner. You know, Will Scutrer, I think he, he told me on Facebook that uh, he had a brother. He had a Greek brother named Bofides. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. That's very good, Will. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, I don't know, like, if if you got your squirrel and you're feeding it meth and everything, and they are chasing you down, you need to run a little further than a <laughs> hotel in Lauderdale County, right? Yeah. Like, let's get out of the state at least. You well, think he could run a little faster, too. True, right. Well, and he had a he had a motorcycle. He was on a motorcycle, and he rammed a police car. That doesn't seem like the smartest move ever. You know, like that's a you're outweighed by a lot when yes. it comes to that. Yes, yes. Some people will say methamphetamines cloud your judgment. I don't know if that to be the case though. <laughs> but well, they certainly don't cloud your judgment when it comes to naming your pet squirrel. Right, it's an excellent name for a squirrel. Yes. Excellent name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which I mean, I don't know. A squirrel, how do you like how do you tame a squirrel? You just have to get it when it's a baby, don't I you? I guess so. I don't know. I know that my grandfather when now he's passed on, but when he was a kid, he had a pet squirrel. Hmm. And that's what he did. He raised it from when it was a baby. Yeah. And it would just hang around. Wow. And, I would think that thing would like tear up your curtains and stuff and gnawing on everything. Well, I don't think, in the, I don't think they had curtains in the Depression. Yeah, probably so, true. Good point. I don't think they were too Good worried point. about that. I was always like gnawing on your, you know, couch or like your wooden chair leg and stuff all the time. <laughs> well, you just go carve you another chair. Yeah, true. When that Very true. Yeah, during the Depression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But especially if you get one on meth, that's got to be a handful. Now, as far as I know, my grandfather never had a meth squirrel. No. So. I did watch a Drunk History the other night. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with Drunk History? I, I am. And uh, apparently John F. Kennedy was on meth for a little while. He really? didn't realize it. He had like this doctor because he had some kind of you know condition or syndrome. Mm-hmm. And he had this doctor who came and was like, oh, yeah, they called him Dr. Feelgood. 
And he was like, oh, yeah, I got a— Did I got he want the, to be your Frankenstein? Right. He's like, I got this shot of vitamins that'll make you feel better. And so he's, like, giving shots to him, and it ended up being methamphetamine. So, Huh. Well, I know the Nazis, they— Oh, uh, yeah. They're big <laughs> meth <is. laughs> They right. did. That's how they were able to capture all of France in, right. like, the course of a weekend. And speaking of poor decision-making, that probably led them to invade Russia. You know, <laughs> that's a good really point. poor decision making. That's a good point. Yeah, they're like, no, yeah, no, we got it, we got it, man, we got this, Hitler. Look, come on, let's go, let's go. You know, yeah. Which Russia was like, pretty much like, hey, you don't mess with us, we ain't gonna mess with you. That's and, happened a lot. I mean, yeah. Napoleon, same yeah. thing happened to him. Oh yeah. When that Russian winter sets in, I, I've never experienced it, but I heard from it's everything rough. I've read, it's no joke. Well, Russia was like, you're going to get tired of killing us before we get tired of dying anyways. Right. You know, like, hey, I'll just keep sending them. You know, shoot <laughs> yeah. them down. It's fine. It's fine. We got more. We got more where that right. came from. Yeah. I mean, that's basically, that was their strategy. So Russia did a lot to help win World War II. We as Americans don't like to talk about it, but right. they, they played a very integral integral role in World War II. They so, did. Yeah. I mean, sh- shout out to Stalin, <laughs> all time, <laughs> all time good guy. You know, <laughs> help put down the Nazis. All time good guy. Everybody loves Stalin. <laughs> and that was talking history with our Oddity podcast. Yes. Well, speaking of squirrels, our next story comes from our buddy squirrel. Okay. Oklahoma woman caught on her own CCTV camera firebombing and shooting into her neighbor's house. Okay. Wow, so, that's going to be my new neighbors after like <laughs> a month. Yes. You know? The video is precious, though, of that, by the way. Check the show notes out, people. It's pretty awesome. It says here, an Oklahoma woman was arrested after being caught on camera firing gunshots and throwing a lit towel into her next-door neighbor's home. Firefighters were called to the burning property in Dell City on June 10th, responding to 911 calls that reported flames coming from the garage door. Having contained the blaze, fire investigators learned that there was an ongoing conflict between the owner of the burnt home and the next-door neighbor. Oh, you think? <laughs> yeah, I would think so. <laughs> her name was Annie Durham, and she was 59 years old. So, Annie got her gun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she got after it. <laughs> Shocking footage of the incident was captured on CCTV showing Durham firing two shots into the side of the home before throwing a flaming object into the door, setting the house ablaze. Okay. The video released by the Dell City Fire Department came from the accused woman's own surveillance camera. So she did yeah, the cop's right, job for him here. Right. Like, yes, how do you not remember you have a surveillance camera? <laughs> wow. And how do you not turn it off first? I mean, I'm glad yeah. she didn't. I'm glad she got no, herself yeah, yeah. caught She definitely here. deserved to be caught. Let's <laughs> be clear on that. But still, if you're going to do that, yeah, she unplug could, it. <laughs> she could She could have made uh, America's dumbest criminals. <laughs> she, Yes, she's Is in the running for it. I don't know, but it should. She well, Maybe it shouldn't come back because we're doing really good. That's you know, true. That's kind of our niche right now. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Well, maybe we don't need it to come back. According to the fire department, Durham was initially resilient, giving up the footage. <laughs> claiming that the camera had not been switched on. However, it was eventually obtained with the help of the city police department's computer forensic division. Durham was arrested on Monday, June 17th, and is charged with second-degree arson and discharge of a firearm into a dwelling. Okay. Imagine that. She didn't want to give up the footage. Right. But it should never, yeah, it should have been switched off right. before she ever did. Absolutely. Anything. Unplug it. Yeah. Yeah. Never commit a crime while you're on camera. That's a John Long especially, commandment. Especially if it's your camera. Yeah, you're right. Yes. If you know it's there, like you had it installed. I mean, this is right up there with like the teenagers who like you know, Facebook Live their right. own vandalism or yes. whatever, you know? Yeah, just stupid people do stupid things, I guess. But I wonder what kind I, – like, I would like to know the backstory of the feud. Yeah, well, I, I would like to know why they're fighting. Because I can't you, imagine much that would – Make me so mad that I'm going to start firing a gun at <laughs> right. somebody. Well, have you seen? Did you watch the video? I mean, she just I, like actually, actually I didn't. See no, it. it's so precious. <laughs> she just like walks out and she's got like her pistol in her hand. She just like reaches up over the fence and like pop 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 pop. pop. <laughs> Like not even just firing really, indiscriminately, yeah, not just, even looking at what she's firing at. And then she comes back a little while later with a, a flaming towel and just throws it over the fence into the house. There's like a doorway there. So I imagine Golly. she had the camera put there because of her neighbors were probably doing something crazy. Right. You know, and she's like, I'm going to catch y'all. You know, maybe they've been shooting a gun in her house or something. <laughs> I don't she know. she caught herself. Yeah, she caught herself. <laughs> what an idiot. What an idiot. Well, I mean... 
if you have problems with your neighbor, if any of my new neighbors are listening, <laughs> um, just come over and knock on the door. Let's discuss it. Like, yes. let, no need to get gunplay and all that involved. <laughs> yes. We're going to get the boxes off our porch, by the way, guys. I just want everybody <laughs> in the neighborhood to know. We're going to get the boxes off our porch. We have a mountain of boxes on our porch. <laughs> We're going to build a new studio. <laughs> yes. We're going to build it out of box cardboard. <laughs> yeah. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> um, well, let's move on to my last story here. Okay. This is a story out of North Carolina, but uh, it's on a website from Australia. Mm-hmm. I don't know how all that works. I guess the internet, yeah. But it's uh, news.com.au, and the headline reads, Man sues fast food chain claiming breakfast had too few hash browns. Which okay. I've, been, I've been there before, by <laughs> right. the way. A man is suing Hardee's claiming the fast food chain's manager did not treat him fairly by giving him too few hash rounds on his breakfast plate. So Hardee's has the little small hash mm-hmm. rounds. McDonald's has the big like hash brown log, <laughs> by the way. It's like a patty. Yeah. It's a yeah. hash brown patty. Right. That they take out of the freezer and pop in the toaster. Yeah, right. Very convenient to eat going down the road, by it the is. way. Yeah. Not my favorite hash browns. It's better than no. their fries. Yeah. No, I mean... <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> Don't get me started on the fries. McDonald's has the best fries. Everybody knows that. All right. Everybody has acknowledged that. Except for the fact that nobody knows that. The, here's the here's the thing. And I was thinking about this the other night when I was going to sleep. So was I. <laughs> that see, when Super Size Me came out, that movie, yes. you know. Well, that started like that this hit whole piece on McDonald's. Yeah, it was a hit piece on McDonald's. It's a cloud in everybody's judgment, and everybody likes to act like they're above McDonald's. <laughs> like, no, I hate McDonald's, but McDonald's continues to dominate the fast food market. Like, we're all eating there, just nobody admits they like it because they feel like they're bad people if they do or something. Yeah. So, I mean, the numbers don't lie. McDonald's is selling more fries than anybody. They're selling more burgers than anybody. And then somehow nobody likes McDonald's. <laughs> so it doesn't add up. <laughs> right. I mean, that's, I a compe- think, that's a compelling argument. It's a compelling argument, but I think there is one thing and one thing only that is keeping McDonald's in business. And that, my friend, is the Happy Meal. <laughs> okay. My son... Of course. It's a happy meal like, you know what? every week. I bet you Eli not, loves her fries. It's, no, it's not because of those fries. It's because of that stupid Chinese two penny, two cent little toy right. that you get in the box. Well, I would think if I were to offer Eli some McDonald's fries, he would not turn them down. He would not be like, Those are those are trash, Dad. You're on what you want to bet. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I if can't bet we're bad. This, okay. <laughs> if he don't have ranch sauce to dip him in, he's not interested. Oh, for real? For real? Oh, ranch is a bold choice. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm not above a French fry and ranch. No, dressing. me either. I but if not. you have to put ranch dressing on a French fry to eat it, <laughs> that's. I mean, it's the same thing with Chick Fil A. You know. <laughs> well, Chick Fil A's fries are not as great as people like to make them out to be. Well, they're well great. we went over that already. <laughs> yes. I mean, the, the reason- issue here is McDonald's <laughs> fries are are great, and everybody likes to act like they're not because they all think they're too cool for McDonald's. That's my that's my theory. Okay, but somehow we're still selling a ton of fries at McDonald's and more burgers than anybody else at McDonald's. But somehow nobody likes McDonald's, and not everybody has kids who want Happy Meals too. By the way, do they not? Yeah. I think they do. No, there's a lot of people without kids in the world, you know? Well, yeah, but do they eat at McDonald's? I ate at McDonald's yesterday. You have four kids, John. We're talking I, about I was the by myself. No kids. I was by myself. I got a number nine, two cheeseburgers, large fries, a large Coke, okay? <laughs> okay. I was all by myself. I was working in West Point, Mississippi, so there we go. Well, I mean, I go to McDonald's for the Happy Meal. Yeah. And that's usually all I get. Oh, so well. Wow. I, I go through the drive through I get a Happy Meal for Eli. And then I go get like some good fries somewhere else. <laughs> Where? At Five Guys, you're driving over, dropping a twenty dollar bill for a sack of fries. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'm not in that income bracket. I have a, I have an expensive mortgage now. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway. Anyway. <laughs> We got totally off of hash browns, <laughs> which Waffle House has the best hash browns. Okay, I'm with you on yeah, that. They everybody do. agree on that, right? They do. There's nobody has better hash browns. I love hash browns at Waffle House. Uh, me too. Me too. I'm with you. Yeah, Waffle House is a number one. You won't hear any complaints from me. Shout out to Ben Saucer, who used to work for me, now runs a Waffle House, by the way. It's one of the most affordable dinner and show places you can go <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> 
The one in Northport's really great. It's very calm when I've been in there. Of course, oh, they're all great. I'm, I'm not. Saying. I'm not hitting up Walmart at the time where all the crazy stuff or wa- uh, Waffle House at the time all the crazy stuff's breaking out anymore. Right. Right. Got but trapped in one. Time. Yeah, got trapped in one one time because I didn't have any cash. <laughs> oh, yeah. What'd you do? I was a little inebriated when I went in. Thought I had more money than I did, and Uh-oh. I didn't. Uh, a, a friend bailed me out. So okay, yeah. Yeah, I was trapped. Bailed you out of the Waffle House or bailed you out of jail? Bailed me out of the Waffle House. <laughs> okay. I hadn't seen him in years, too. He just happened to come in. I'm like, hey, man, I need some cash, dude. <laughs> I'm $6 short. So. Oh, man. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Shout out to Noah. Appreciate it. Not Noah from the Bible. Noah from <laughs> Dixon and Mills. All right. Back to the story. <laughs> so a man suing Hardee's. Claiming the fast food chain's manager did not treat him fairly by giving him too few hash rounds on his breakfast plate. Tommy Martin, who's 58, of North Carolina, is claiming his rights were violated. His rights were violated when a manager whose name was not shared refused to give him the correct amount of hash rounds. According to Hardy's website, a breakfast platter appears to come with about a dozen of deep fried potatoes. Okay. And how many did he get? It doesn't say yet. Martin, who is black, is alleging the incident was racially motivated, <laughs> noting, oh, <laughs> noting the manager and other customers at the restaurant were white, the Charlotte Observer reported. And they got their hash browns. Yeah, well, I guess so. I <laughs> guess proper, it went around and counted. The proper number of hash browns were given to Well, them. I don't know that the picture on the menu is... You're never going right. to get yeah. what the picture on no, the menu looks no, like. No, not at all. It don't matter what color you are. The picture on the menu is always going to look better than what you actually right. get. It's not a money issue, Martin told the outlet. I just want to be treated fairly. Martin alleged the manager gave him his money back after he com- after he complained, but would not give him more of the hash right. <laughs> okay, I'm on this dude's side. Okay, <laughs> that is uncalled for. The manager came back and said, that, that's what you get. Go home with a tear in my eye. <laughs> I've got to do something, Martin said in a handwritten damages claim he filed with the U.S. District Court in Charlotte on Monday, the Observer reported. Might want to get a lawyer, don't want to send in handwritten court documents. Uh, Fox News has contacted Hardy's for a statement concerning the pending litigation, but apparently they haven't had uh, any answer yet. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know how many hash rounds are supposed to come on the breakfast platter. But I would say if you're Hardee's, if you're the Hardee's manager. Wouldn't you rather have a happy customer? Yeah, don't don't just, draw a hard line on the hash browns. He just wants a few hash yeah, browns. Just give him a few and more. And then you give him his money back. You want, right. You'd rather give him his money back right. than just give him a few yeah. more potatoes? That's what I was going to say. Keep the money. Give him a few more. <laughs> go, hey, I'm sorry, man. we got a new guy working on the hash rounds yeah. today. He didn't realize that he put too little on there. Yeah. You know, Don't make this an issue <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> right. But we know you like hash browns. We like hash browns too. Yeah, everybody loves hash browns, right? Right. I don't know. I don't eat at Hardee's that much. I don't either. They're, they're or Carl's Jr. Yeah, or Carl. The same thing, right? It's same but different. Is it? I don't. I don't know. I think they own by the same place, but some of them are Hardee's and some of them are Carl's Jr. I spent the night in a Carl's Jr. in New Jersey one time in 1994. Really? Yeah. That's fascinating. Me, me and Deidre, by the way. <laughs> hey, that sounds romantic. Oh yeah, that's what actually. So we were on a school trip. Long story. <laughs> we were on a school trip, and uh, we had just started dating. And the bus broke down. We're on the way back from New York, and we had to. We were just stranded there overnight. And all these girls were like crying and stuff. Like we weren't ever going to get back to Alabama <laughs> or something. And Deidre was like totally cool the whole time. And I was like, man, this is this girl's got a little different. I like her. You all know. Right. And we hung out and we talked, and I took a nap on the bench, and you know, <laughs> had a good little time together. So, anyways. Carl's Jr. is responsible for my marriage. Thank you, Carl's Jr. <laughs> and give us more hash browns. Yeah, don't don't don't, don't go hard line on the hash browns. Exactly. Bottom line. Okay. Well, for our final story of the show. Okay. And now this one is it's going to be another one of those news stories that you might want to little sensitive. A little sensitive. You might want to you know take tell the little kids to go away or maybe you know turn down to come back later yeah. after they've been put to bed. Yeah. I would like to tell all the teenage boys to leave, too, but they probably already know about this. So. Thomas. <laughs> Turn it off, Thomas. Yes. Okay. Okay. Which, hold right. on, time out. By the way, Cheyenne asked me today, my foster daughter, mm-hmm. uh, when she was going to get to listen to the podcast. <laughs> 
And I was like, well, we'll get around to it one day. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we'll find, we'll find a time for you to listen. Yeah, don't worry about it at all. So, anyways. I, was, I guess the answer is when, she, when you get a smartphone. <laughs> I want to be like, when you're 18, I'll let you listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so back to the anyway, technology. This is a story about technology. Okay. About horrifyingly scary technology. Okay, all right. That is on the horizon. New AI deep fake app creates nude images of women in seconds. Oh, wow. Now, I did not know this was a real story. I thought this might have been another fake story, but I, I saw it on several different sites. This one comes from The Verge. Okay, I'm I'm very interested in this technology. A new AI-powered software tool makes it easy for anyone to generate realistic-looking nude images of women simply by feeding the program a picture of the intended target wearing clothes. I, I like how they use the <laughs> word target there. Right. Yeah, target. <laughs> yes. The app is called Deep Nude, and it's the latest example of AI-generated deep fakes being used to create compromising images of unsuspecting women. The software was first spotted by Motherboard's Samantha Cole and is available to download for free on Windows with a premium version that offers better resolution output images for $99. Oh, so you got to get if you want the good images. <laughs> yeah. like You're staring at like a 36 JPEG or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Nothing about computers. Or you can yeah. pay 100 bucks. Or you pay a hundred bucks and it'll be crystal clear. Okay. All right. Both the free and the premium versions of the app add watermarks to the AI generated nudes that clearly identify them as fake. But in the images created by Motherboard, this watermark is easy to remove. I assume oh. you just crop it. Yeah. That's all you right. have to do. Yeah, it's probably like in the bottom corner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you crop the image if yeah. you don't have the watermark. Uh, we were unable to test the app ourselves as the servers have apparently been overloaded. So when this app went available, it crashed the website like wow. immediately. So everybody. <laughs> everybody was wanting it. None of these people know how to use Photoshop. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We've had Photoshop for a long time. A long but time. this is better okay. and it's easier. Easier yes. is probably the big thing. As we've seen with previous examples of deep fake pornography, the quality of the output is varied. It's certainly not photorealistic, and when examined closely, the images are they are relatively easy to spot as fake. The AI flesh is blurry and pixelated, and the process works best on high-resolution images when the target is already wearing revealing clothes like a swimsuit uh, or a two-piece or something like yeah. that. But at lower resolutions, or when seen only briefly, the fake images are easy to mistake for the real thing and could cause untold damage to individuals' lives. Although much of the discussion around the potential harm of deep fakes has centered on political misinformation and propaganda, the use of this technology to target women has been a consist has been a constant since its creation. Indeed, that is how the tech first spread with users on Reddit adapting AI research published by academics to create fake celebrity nudes. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> yes. that's standard. Anything that gets like uh Thank invented you for, yes. is immediately somebody's like, what can I do to get off on this? You thank, know? You, thank you, 4chan. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. A recent report from HuffPost highlighted how being targeted by deep fake programs and can upend someone's life. As with revenge images, these images can be used to shame, harass, intimidate, and silence women. There are forums where men can pay experts to create deep fakes of coworkers, friends, or family members, but tools like this new app make it easy to create such images in private and at the touch of a button. Notably, the app is not capable of producing images of men, uh -huh. as reported by Motherboard. Wow. If you give it a picture of a man, it simply adds lady parts. Okay. So, all right. Well, Which, that could be fun in its own right. right. That's somebody's fetish. <laughs> yes. Right. Or, you know, if you want to spread some of those at your buddy's bachelor party. True. <laughs> you know? That's true. And you got a coworker you really don't like. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The creator of the app, who identifies himself as Alberto, told Motherboard. <laughs> Alberto. <laughs> yes. That he was inspired by memories of old comic book advertisements for X-ray specs, which promised I that did. they could be used to see through people's clothes. Right. Like everyone, I was fascinated by the idea that they could really exist, and this memory remains, said Alberto. He says that he is a technology enthusiast rather than a voyeur, and is motivated by curiosity and enthusiasm for AI, as well as a desire to see if he could make an economic return from his experiments. Hmm. Alberto says he considered the potential harm caused by this software, but ultimately deci he decided that it was not a barrier. 
I also said to myself, the technology is ready within everyone's reach, Alberta told Motherboard. So if someone has bad intentions, having his app deep nude doesn't change much. If I don't do it, someone else will do it within a year. Oh, wow. So, okay. Because that's all the reason I, you need. Yeah. It's, it's just like AI research. We got to do it. And if we don't, someone else will do yeah, it. Somebody else will do it. Yes. Right. We contacted Alberto to ask further questions, and he replied briefly, saying that the app was created for fun and that he hadn't expected it to become so popular. He again compared the software to Photoshop, saying that this can be used to achieve the same results as Deep Nude after half an hour of YouTube tutorial. He also added that if people started using the software for malicious purposes, uh, we will quit for sure. Well, d- dude, you know people are going right. to use this what do you for malicious purposes. Before you put right. the program up on the net, you know people are going to do True. bad things for this. Uh, one negative aspect that Alberta does seem to be worried about is the potential legal fallout with the license agreement for his app claiming that every picture edited through his software is considered a fake parody and that the app is an entertainment service that does not promote uh, sexually explicit images. This is an absurd claim to make given the app's name, uh, how it is being marketed, as well as its entire functionality. I agree wholeheartedly with uh, Verge here. Deep fakes do exist in a legal gray area, though, with lawyers saying that AI-generated nudes could constitute defamation, but that removing them from the Internet would be a possible violation of the First Amendment. An exception to this might be if the technology is used to create the images of minors, something that Deep Nude does seem to be... Yeah. uh, capable of. Right now, politicians around the world are being considered are beginning to consider the potential harms caused by these fakes, including here in the US, but such legislation will be slow to assemble and the main priority for lawmakers is stopping the spread of political misinformation. Apps like <laughs> Imagine the- lawmakers <laughs> looking out for themselves before everybody else. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Yeah. And imagine technology moving faster than democracy. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> Apps like Deep Nude are almost certain to proliferate, offering faster and more realistic fakes in the years to come now so i can go on and get this right now because i've kind of forgot what my wife looks like without her clothes on <laughs> just want to try it out and see how it works well you actually can't get this right now oh. because as was mentioned the, oh yeah the that's high right. traffic crashed the site rather than put it back up he released a twitter statement and i have oh. this twitter statement right here that i'm going to read for us right now here is the brief history and the end of deep nude We created this project for users' entertainment a few months ago. We thought we were selling a few sales every month in a controlled manner. Honestly, the app is not that great, and it only works with particular photos. We never thought it would become viral, and we would not be able to control the traffic. We greatly underestimated the request. Mm. Despite the safety measures adopted, he's talking about the watermarks here, if 500,000 people use it, the probability that people will misuse it is too high. We don't want to make money this way. Surely some copies of Deep Nude will be shared on the web, but we don't want to be the ones who sell it. Downloading the software from other sources or sharing it by any other means would be against the terms of our website. From now on, Deep Nude will not release other versions and does not grant anyone its use. Not even licenses to activate the premium version. People who have not yet upgraded will receive a refund. The world is not yet ready for Deep (laughs) Nude. Okay. The world's not ready. (laughs) Fortunately, this has been taken down, and you can't go get it now. Although, like the guy said in his Twitter statement, I mean, once it hits the net, it's out there. I'm sure people still have it, and people will be using it. Right. And like that guy said, there's going to be other apps that do similar things. The technology is going to get better and better. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what the answer is because I like the First Amendment just as much as the rest of them. Yeah. But this is this is a problem. This is something that we are going to have to face in the future. And as a dad, which I mean, I've got two boys, but as a parent, yeah, that's this, not cool. this really concerns me and where our country, well, where the world is right. headed. You know. Well, you know, I've had the talk with Thomas. Mm-hmm. You know, like you, there's no reason for you to take a picture of yourself without your clothes on, <laughs> ever. <laughs> you know. Like, really no good reason to do that. <laughs> right. You know, if, only bad reasons. Right. And only bad things will come of that. You right. Know? And uh, because, you know, I mean, if, if say, well, I want to, all right, I'm married. I say I want to send Deidre a picture of me without my clothes on. Well, Deidre can see me without my clothes anytime she wants to. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's no really no reason for her to have a photographic record of it. Except that it's April Fool's Day. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> 
so you know, I don't, I don't, I don't get the whole sending naked pictures to people thing. You know, right. I, I guess I'm like from a different generation or something, and <laughs> yeah. you know, like I just have never had the desire to send my wife a picture of my penis at any point in time <laughs> ever. You know, and uh, so I don't know why you would want to do that. So if you never take a nude photo of yourself. Then if one pops up, then you know it's fake and you can maybe refute it. That's just yeah. all I'm saying. But if you have sent a few of them around, the next thing you know, oh, here's a picture of John without his clothes on. Surprise, surprise, he's got a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I can be like, hey, guys, that's not that's not me, okay? But and I know this kind of goes along with what you were saying, but uh, as we move forward into the future, are we getting to – a Point where it don't matter if you take a picture or you don't, because there's going to be technology out True. there that can make it look like you did. True. Yeah, I don't know. And will society get to the point where we consider everything we see as fake? Well, see, I, you know, I mean, I don't want to get too far out in the left field here, but say you take a picture, say I take my wife's picture, and somebody she's got her clothes on. Somebody gets my wife's picture, does this thing. And it shows her without her clothes on. And then they text that picture to Thomas. Well, here's the thing, though. I am I know exactly what my wife looks like without her clothes <laughs> so on. I know, know every mole. I know every part of her. I've been looking at it for a very long time. Studied it for a very long time. All right? I know. And so if I were to see it, I'd be like, nah, not her. You yeah. know? Hey, somebody's messed. Hey, Thomas, that ain't your mama. All mm-hmm. right? So I don't know. I mean. But that's still that's still embarrassing, though. Is it? I think so. I mean, okay, you know, well, okay, you've <laughs> – I have boys, mm-hmm. but let's say that, you know, man, if I had a daughter. I do have a daughter. And, and they get to high school yeah. and, and guys are, are showing this stuff around. Right. I don't know what I can do about it, but that would be a grave concern to me, you know. Well, I, don't, I know it would be – I would not be happy with it. I would right. say that. But I would go to Libby and say, hey – you hadn't sent out any naked pictures, have you? You know, yeah. like now's the time to tell me the truth right. because, you know, Eli over here had his phone out <laughs> earlier and I saw a picture looked a lot like you. Have you sent Eli a picture? And now Tiny avoids me at church. And he won't Tiny talk won't to make me. eye contact with me anymore. <laughs> And hopefully, hopefully, I've raised her, and she would say no. You right. know? Well, of course, she does have my DNA with her, so <laughs> she might do something stupid. And she would say no, and I would be like, okay, well, there's a fake picture of you rolling around. Yeah. Just so heads up that you know, mm-hmm. but it's not you, so it's not your body. Those aren't your boobs. So, <laughs> you know, as long as you know the type of person that you are, then don't worry about it. Yeah. And, I mean... There's so much nudity on the internet anyways that I think eventually it's just like seeing a pair of boobs isn't going to be a big deal. <laughs> like when I was a kid and we would get like, you know, my buddy's dad's Playboy <laughs> down from the top of his closet. Yeah. It was like a monumental moment, you know? <laughs> it was like the biggest thing ever, you know? You're saying kids today don't experience that. Well, they're like desensitized <laughs> to right. it, you know? Yeah. And so maybe at the end of the day, they're like, well, okay. Yeah, so that's a fake picture of your daughter or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know, though. I mean, I think Ron White, the great comedian Ron White, made an excellent point Yeah, when he says, you've seen one pair, you want to see the rest <laughs> of them. You want to see all of them, too. <laughs> I just completely understand that. <laughs> but I'm saying uh, – I don't know. I don't know what you can do. I don't know how you stop this from happening. So we better yeah, just think, you better just learn to accept it. Yeah, that's, I think you're right here. I mean, you can't stop this. Right. This is just something that we're going to have to face. Right. I think. But if and you're it not, me. if you're not sending out naked pictures of yourself, then you can 100 percent know that everyone that somebody has of you without mm-hmm. clothes on is fake. I will say this: if anyone is going to AI generate nude pictures of me. Could you do me a solid and make me look good? Yeah, right. Same here. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna need a few inches. Okay. I don't, I don't think. You know what? I won't even. I won't even complain. I won't say nothing if you just do me a solid. Yeah, no. And, right. and make me look dynamite. Yeah. I would like some abs. You know. <laughs> yes. Um. You know, I, I was gonna make another point, and I don't remember what it was about it. Oh, yeah. If you're 17 or 18, and you're listening to this, and you got a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and you guys are in love. Nothing's going to separate you, all right? Don't send them a picture of you because 
more than likely, odds are you're not going to make it. And then somebody's got that you're not in love with anymore has a picture of you without your clothes on that they could send to everybody in the world. And then that goes up on a revenge site. Yeah, right. So. Yes. Now, and I say that as a guy who fell in love with his wife when he was 17 and am still we're still together, you know. And I don't have any naked pictures of my wife, by the way. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Was that God? I feel the same way. <laughs> right. <I> have, <laughs> I'm with you, Lord. <laughs> I have no naked photos of my wife, by the way. I just want to go on the record right now. None. Have one of her in her underwear that I took in jest <laughs> one time. And uh, I don't even know where that is. I think we probably burned it or something. I think it's on the internet. No. <laughs> But that's it. That's the closest thing I have, you know. <laughs> I have no naked pictures of my wife, just okay. in case. Because I told somebody the other day, I let my kids look through my phone whenever, and they're like, what do you do about your purse? I'm like, man, I don't take pictures like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't take those pictures. I don't even like looking at myself without clothes on. I don't want a <laughs> photographic record of it. Excellent point. So I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you do about any of this. It's just a, it's a mess. Yeah. It's a mess. It's a mess. Perverts, once again, ruin it for the rest of us normal people, <laughs> right. you know? I mean, like, what happened to you using your imagination? Which I can't, I can't really think of a, a good application for yeah. this technology. There's no, like, <laughs> yeah, know? really good thing. I can't think of any good Christian wholesome use for this technology. No, not at all. At not all. at all. But wow. anyway. All right. I'm going back to reading the ad this week. Didn't go as well as I wanted it to last week. Let's talk about Cajun Curl. Some people say Cajun Curl, their Cajun Curl chips are better than any French fry, and I happen to agree, I would agree. with that. Yes, yes, better whether we're talking about McDonald's or Five Guys or whatever. Cajun Curl definitely gets the gold medal. In it that. does. So let's talk about Cajun Curl and their wild, world famous Bayou Blended Spice. We want to thank them for their support. You guys listening can check them out at CajunCurl.com. You can order their spice there and their cutter for potatoes, which will help you bake your Cajun Curl fries uh, right there on CajunCurl.com. It was created on the Elm Bayou in Evangeline Parish, Louisiana, and it's a seasoning that goes on everything. If you like cooking or eating, this is a spice for you. Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice goes well with chicken, beef, pork, potatoes, the anaconda that's still on the loose in Alberta (laughs) City, and anything else you can think of putting it on. The spiral potato cutter is absolutely amazing and it's easy to use and it's easy to clean and allow you to make your own Cajun Curl chips using it. If you want to turn your next cookout or event up a notch, imagine whipping up a batch of homemade potato chips. Your next door neighbor isn't going to be able to top that at all. Yeah, you're just flexing all over everybody in the neighborhood. On their website, CajunCurl.com, you can not only order the Bayou Blend Spice and their chip cutter, but you can also find recipes there that are absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, you can locate your nearest retailer or order your own right there on CajunCurl.com. Your local grocers here in Tuscaloosa County, where you can find it, are Vowels on Skyland Boulevard, Mark's Mart in Northport, South Finest Meats, and Piggly Wiggly in Northport as well. All of their products are made in the USA. We've got July 4th coming up this week. We do. That's right. Um, so By the time this comes out, it might be tomorrow. That's right. Yeah, when you hear this... <laughs> July 4th is to You may be listening to this on July 4th, and if you're cooking, you better need to use your Cajun Curl because it's made in the USA, and everything you're grilling out is going to taste a whole lot better once you use it. It's all natural. It's low salt. It has a little kick to it, but it doesn't burn your lips. World famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice. Taste the spice, but not the heat. Check them out on CajunCurl.com and use the promo code EOP10. That's EOP and the number 10 to get a 10% discount. Because we ask that you use a spice, but we don't ask you to pay full price. Amen. All right. And another thing we love here on the Earth Oddity Podcast is pats on the back. Right. We like people to review right. our podcast. We need validation from <laughs> strangers and friends. <laughs> and we like to read them. We got yes. anything this week, John? We got a couple on our Facebook page, which awesome. if you're listening to this, you don't follow us on Facebook, find us, all right? It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and there we get a lot of stories from yeah. the Facebook group. Yeah, things so. are popping off in there all the time. Mm-hmm. When You know with my mom sharing stuff in there. That it's going to be great. There was a time our Facebook group was primarily me and John talking to each other. <laughs> and Wilts. 
yes. and then you would see like a tumbleweed blow through every <laughs> once in a while. Yes, but it's like every day. It's stuff every, every day there's something, and it's yeah. you know I, I still post in the group. John still posts in the group occasionally, but yeah. it is so it is a very rich and colorful internet yes. community right. that we have birthed into the world, and, and no, it's amazing. Really, no argument either. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like everybody gets along. We have a lot mm-hmm. of fun. And we you know talk about the weird news stories that get put up in there. So yeah. Um, this first one, I don't remember if we read this one or not. It's from my buddy Todd Glover, and it says, this is from two weeks ago, best podcast about nothing. <laughs> Three out of four dentists degree. <laughs> and then the next one comes from Mark Owen, and uh, it's from a week ago. It says, funny podcast helps lighten up my day. Number one podcast among Olympic curling teams and the World Ping Pong Federation. Keep up the good work of delivering laughs the only way you know how. These are the biggest supporters of leather letter carriers I have ever met. That's true. Love love the mail carriers. <laughs> yeah, we do. And it's an old it's like an old fashioned Southern Baptist train wreck beats a barbecue with a hint of VBS sprinkled on top. Helps <laughs> my day go faster when I'm at work. So thanks, Mark. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. And all the letter carriers out there. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. If you're a letter carrier and you're listening to this, thank you for your service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you got a job. You do. Yeah. I, I would like a tough one, I think. And Amazon did not help. No, <laughs> man. I'm down, I don't even order Amazon from Amazon. Prime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me think. I'm trying to think of uh, other news. If you cannot get enough of yours truly, put, I put something in the Facebook group about this, but if you're just a person who only listens to the podcast, I recently was on the Retro Rewind podcast. That's it, right. It released last week, and we talked about the movie Willow. So oh, yeah. Not a lot of people know this, but uh, not only am I a podcaster, I'm also a movie genius. Oh. And I do uh, that. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a, not a movie genius. And we discussed the Which is classic... Why. Classic yeah. film Willow. That's why I'm not on Retro Rewind. So. <laughs> and look, in the future, we made another guest right. appearance on a podcast that my buddy Kevin does called right. Where's the Line? Where's the Line's a great podcast. Kevin has the best voice in the podcast yes. industry. Now, it's not for the faint of heart. No. If you are not into true crime or disturbing stories yeah, right then it, this may not be for you right but if you want to hear about head transplants i would and, say our episode was tame compared to to the ones i've attempted to listen to before <laughs> yes. but i'm a i'm very weak stomach guy right. so well you've uh you've seen a lot of death i have you've I seen have. some stuff yeah, man. i've seen some stuff in my life not into <laughs> people dying yes <laughs> yes but yeah where's the lines great they're good people kevin and samantha mm-hmm. and we'll be on there i think they're going to release it on the 13th of July. They said they were going to try to release right. on the 13th now, of every month moving forward. We left them a lot of editing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I will derail them. As our listeners know, I will derail a podcast. <laughs> so it may not be out then, but keep your eyes out. Go ahead and subscribe to it now. Yeah. So you get it when it drops, and it'll be, you know, a little bit mm-hmm. of extra dose of Earth Oddity along with a really good quality podcast about head transplants. About head transplants. If you listen to us talk about Dr. Sergio Canavero, that's right. And, and just could not get enough of it. Right. This dude this who married a-, a smoke show and decided he didn't want to get his head transplanted anymore. And there's like updates to that story. There is. Within right. so. the Where's the Line podcast. So check them out. They got a Facebook group too and Instagram and all that. So. Mm-hmm. Follow them on all your social medias, too, as well, because they're really cool people. And I guess with that, I guess that's it. You got anything else to say? Happy 4th of July. Yes. Never forget that Britain blew a 13-colony lead, (laughs) and uh, we we came back (laughs) from nothing. And uh, and we're now independent. That may or may not have been the best decision ever. <laughs> we are now independent, and we have freedom as much as the government allows us to have. America, the original Brexit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> America, land of the free, home of the world's largest prison population. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have been listening to Earth Oddity Podcast, and we thank you so much for listening to us, no matter where you get us. Whether you get us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, whatever, we're on the mall. We're there. 
If you would like to email into the show, you can reach us at earthoddity at planetmail.net. If you would like to tweet at us, you can reach us on Twitter. We are at underscore earthoddity. If you like pictures, mm-hmm. sometimes we post pictures. Yeah. You can check those out over on Instagram, underscore earthoddity. And if all of that fails, a lot of people don't know this, we have a phone number. That's right. You can call and leave us a voicemail. That's What's right. That phone number? 662 493 2059. That's 662-493-2059. And a very big shout out to Kimmy for recording our very special bumper that we used at the beginning of this episode. And if you want to do that, you can you can do that too and email it to us or leave it on the voicemail. Yeah, absolutely. Right. We hope everybody out there has an excellent week. Earth Oddity for the French Radio Network signing off. Love y'all. Bye. This has been a very odd production. Thanks for listening.